Let's take a look at the starting lineups today, sponsored by Jeep. Jeep, there's only one. You talk about the high-powered offense. During this three-game winning streak, Marquette has had three different scorers lead the team in scoring. Meanwhile, for Seton Hall, they are known for their depth, Dickey, but Jared Roden has been their alpha dog all year long. Jared Roden, one of my star players in the Big East, can do it all on the offensive end and the defense end, scores at all four levels. And then Marquette, Justin Lewis, an emerging an emerging player in his second year, stepping up, contributing offensively, expanding his game out to the three-point range, but he brings the intensity for this Marquette team, a young, talented star. Had a career-high 23 points and 11 rebounds against your Providence Friars. Big-time top-20 matchup to get top 20 win rather to get this three game win streak rolling for Marquette yeah don't bring that up again I'm still, <laughs> I'm still wounded from how they thrashed my fries by 32 points still hurt because of that Marquette playing some really good basketball right now Seton Hall on the other hand has won two of their last three but they aren't coming off a loss to DePaul and here we go from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Seton Hall in the Blues, and Marquette in the home whites. Trey Jackson had it poked away early, 15 on the timer, and it stays here with Seton Hall. One of the impressive things about the Golden Eagles is their defense, their team defense, switching playing the passing lanes and getting deflection. They've been high octane defense. Here's Bryce Aiken. Giving it up to Miles Kale. Defended by Tyler Colette. Four to shoot. And an offensive rebound hauled down by Trey Jackson and the second chance goes. And that's one of the Achilles heels of this Marquette team rebounding. There are minus three on the boards against opponents, and they have to pick that up. Excellent defensive effort, but not finishing off the possession with the rebound, which gave Seton Hall a second chance bucket. One of the points of emphasis for Marquette first-year head coach Shaka Smart was rebounding, going up against the Kevin Willard coach team that has a lot of size, but coming off that loss to DePaul, he said it almost felt like the second game of the season. Still figuring out the combinations, Dickey, because they've had such long stretches of time off due to COVID-19. Yeah, they have to utilize their experience as you see the shot block is starting right there by Obiago. Roden in the corner. And the turnaround jumper rattles home. A very talented combo guard wing. You see him, he can put the ball on the floor. He's a veteran, has patience, he uses footwork, and just lift it over the defense to knock down that mid-range shot. Kolek has been masterful running the offense for Marquette during this three-game win streak. There's a rejection from Roden. Marquette maintains possession. Three to shoot for Morcel. And he banks in a triple. And now the fans can finally sit down. They stand until the first made bucket for Marquette. It comes almost two minutes into the first half. The bank is open on a Saturday, or at least the ATM machine is in on the court. More sale off the glass. Three-point shooting has been a strength of this Marquette team during the three-game winning streak. 41% from downtown. They've been nearly unconscious from beyond the arc. Yeah, they're knocking down at least eight a game from behind the three. And there's that team defense you talked about from Marquette forcing a shot clock violation. And Chaka Smart told us he feels like the key to this thing, Dickey, is the spirit of the team. And that's a big thing when you're coaching basketball. You want your players to be connected on and off the court, have that spirit, and want to help and do for each other and ultimately get team wins. Too high on the pass from Colet to Prosper. Out of bounds. Back to Seton Hall as we look at Dickey's formula for success. Seton Hall has to handle the defensive heat of Marquette. You'll see Marquette right now in the full court press. Utilize their depth and experience, especially coming off COVID. And then Marquette keeps sharing the ball. They're doing well with that and make their defense create offense. 
Seton Hall didn't play a game for 16 days towards the end of December and into early January. And although they did have that big win against UConn last weekend, Dickey, they are still figuring out combinations coming back because they've only had their full complement of nine players in the rotation for just the second time since December 12th. Well, obviously, we have many teams dealing with COVID protocol. It's affecting the momentum of the teams and their players. And this Seton Hall team has depth and experience. And Coach Willie has to use that early. He has to go to his bench. Late in the timer again. Miles Kale spinning. Tough shot over the top of Kirkweth. One of the best shot blockers in the Big East. Well, even though Kale made that shot and was able to navigate and create his own offense, Marquette did an excellent job making that shot a difficult shot opportunity. There's Justin Lewis, the team's leading scorer, and he knocks down a triple. The second of the first half for Marquette. Justin Lewis is coming along with his perimeter shooting. Miles Kale the other way, no, and Lewis hauls in the defensive board. You like to see Lewis knock down threes. What you don't want to see him do is fall in love with it, and he stays out there. But <laughs> you see him right here. This is why I'm saying don't fall in love with it because you get a good make, knock down three, and then a bad miss. His bread and butter is in the paint. Now he's mixing it up on the defensive end. Throwing it loose momentarily from Bryce Aiken. Now Quest out defending Roden. Aiken trying to thread it into the corner to Kale. Instead, it's out of bounds. And back to Marquette. Look at the veteran Kale. Manufacture. Oh, so Oh, so, oh, so good coming off of the bench. <laughs> Those guys are contributing 37 plus points. But not to mention Tyler Kolick. Yeah. 26 assists and six turnovers in those last three games. He has been masterful running this offense. He takes a three and misses off the back iron. Then into the hands of Prosper, who draws a foul on Tyree Samuel. And Tyree Samuel, he's trying to get back in the groove. He's a talented, versatile forward. He's struggled of lately coming off of the COVID. Coach Willard's trying to get him going again, Matt. Yeah, you're right, Tiggy. The game on Thursday against DePaul was just his second game back after nearly a month without playing basketball. He was in isolation and quarantined by himself for 10 days. And according to head coach Kevin Willard, just kind of a shell of himself. When before the COVID pause, he was playing the best basketball of his career. Yeah, anytime you shut down for 10 days or more in this game, uh, up and down, high flow, energy, activity game, you're going to come back rusty mentally, physically, emotionally, and he just has to get back into it. Alexis Gatna picks up the offensive board and the foul. And now Yetna goes to the free throw line. First foul on Oso Iguodaro. And Seton Hall taking advantage of their ability to crash the boards, knowing that that is a weakness of the Golden Eagles rebounding with the bigs that they have on the court. Yet they're making another uh, extra opportunity for them crashing that offensive glass. Well, the free throw line will certainly be a theme to keep an eye on throughout the game. Seton Hall gets to the free throw line the third most of any team in the Big East. And they're second in free throw percentage. So defending without fouling a key today for Shaka Smart's team. Absolutely. Keeping a young team from fouling as you see Kolek miss the easy bunny. You cannot afford to miss those shots. Picked off by Cam Jones. Gives it back to Lewis. And a chance at the three-point play. What a finish by Justin Lewis. I talked about this as one of the formulas to success, one of the keys. Defense creating offense. Cam Jones known as a scorer, but anticipation, using his athleticism, and then look, sharing the ball to Justin Lewis for the finish down the lane in transition. 
for the possibility of a three-point play. Just giving it up, sharing the ball. The concentration, the focus, and the finish. Makes good on it. And you talked about the way this team has shared the ball during the three-game win streak. Assisting on 72% of made field goals. They're averaging 18 assists in the Big East. They're really, I know the holiday season is over, but Cole sets the tone, and it's infectious. All of his teammates are picking it up, sharing the ball, finding open teammates. Kolek has six assists or more in nine straight games. Here's Tyree Samuel, defended by Iguodaro. And Samuel had his shot rejected. And back the other way, here comes the Golden Eagles. Right now, this is the scoring team that Shaka Smart has on the court. As you see, Justin Lewis, again, the precision on the passing, the vision, Cam Jones finding an open teammate in Justin Lewis, that's what makes you be able to shoot 58% in field goal percentage. Yet now, tough finish in the post. Veteran Seton Hall team using their length and athleticism to defend. Lewis right into the chest of Tyree Samuel, and he's headed back to the free throw line. Lewis already has nine points this afternoon. Justin Lewis is a tough guard. He is a positionless player. He can play on the perimeter. He can play in the post. He's one of those wing fours, and if you want to go small, he can play the five. But one of his strongest attributes is he can put the ball on the floor and create offense. Oh, somebody shut the door, man. Somebody <laughs> shut the door. That, that, that breeze off the, hey. off the lake just came in. A shooter like Lewis, he'll shake it off. <laughs> Still getting loose. Early tip time. 11 a.m. local start here in Milwaukee. The brunch. The brunch game. Right. <laughs> and Lewis now in double figures with 10. As Marquette sets up the full court pressure. Marquette will continue to use this 1 2 2 full court. They have the ability to use the length of the guys. Igadoro, Morcel, as they trap the ball. And force another turnover. Numbers the other way. Jones left wide open. Splash! The threes continue to fall for Marquette. They're now four of six in the first half. Again, a team that averages seven steals a game, just applying the pressure. Seton Hall is not handling the heat defensively as of right now for a team that has veteran players. And they cough it up again. Three on three the other way. Jones in transition. Put and the microwave, man. I'm sorry. Put the microwave on 30 seconds. Tap Dickey, they only average 10 turnovers a game this season. Yeah, well, our kid does an excellent job bouncing around. They have that shot to smart culture defensively. They bought in. Playing with violence, in the words of Shaka Smart, over this three game stretch. You got a guy like Marcel, a defensive player of the year in the Big Ten. Ooh, nice, nice pull-up jumper by Rowe. Nice touch. I said to get the ball to him so he can get going. Go to your scores. Don't get away from that. Leads the Seton Hall team with 17 points per game. That shot ending a 7-0 run for Marquette. Now Elliott and a tough scoop high off the window goes. Greg Babyface Elliott with the smooth game, normally known as a jump shot shooter, but the nice touch to avoid the block shot. Missed the other way, followed up by Obiagu. He's off the front end, and Yetna puts back the third opportunity. Again, the Pirates using Obiago and Yetna right there, aggressive on the offensive boards. Marquette's going to have to rebound, gang rebound as a team. Lewis a three, and it rims out. See Hall right there playing a two-three zone, just giving the Golden Eagles a different look defensively. Top shot there from Bryce Aiken, who hit the deck hard. 
Back-to-back -back buckets good now for Seton Hall. And Bryce Aiken is a scoring point guard. He did it at Harvard. He's doing it here. He's emerged now as a starter for Coach Willard. He's been in the game down the stretches. They need his offense. Well, he's making his fourth consecutive start for Kevin Willard because of his offense, Dickie. He's got four games with 22 points out of the last seven. He has been a real spark for the Seton Hall team as they're still figuring out combinations coming back from the COVID pause. Yeah, and I talked to him before the game, and he was had his headphones on, and he was listening to his music, getting in his groove, and I know that music translated in that pull-up J, but you see his points. He's eight points up the last four games, averaging close to 20. The thing with Bryce Aiden is staying healthy. He's always had the injury bug. Hopefully he can stay on the court and continue to produce offensively like he's doing. Now, Kevin Willer did say his body's never been stronger than it is this year. First time in his collegiate career that he's had a full, healthy offseason. And uh, that has manifested itself this year for Bryce Aiken. Second on the team and scoring 13 and a half points. And does an excellent job of getting to the free throw line. Officials reset, reset the shot clock to 15. Morcell and the pull up, Jay. Nothing but nylon and the hot shooting continues for Marquette. 55% from the floor. Even though he's a defensive specialist, he does have offensive abilities. Averaging 13 points a game. And right there you saw the skill, smooth pull up, Jay. Just like you just saw with Roden. Jared Roden, perfect from the floor. Three of three, six points, and he's headed to the free throw line for his first trip. Well, look at Roden. Roden's 6'6, 210 pounds, long arms, smooth jump shot, can score at four levels. When I say four levels, he can knock down threes, he can shoot to the mid range, he can attack the basket, and he can get to the free throw line as you see now. Mitchell now into the ball game for Marquette. One of nine new scholarship players. For Shaka Smart as Marcel is good, creating contact. Road in the other way in traffic draws a foul. And he wants the officials to count the basket. But Kirk Quest came in and might have interrupted what would have been a made basket. The transfer from Maryland right there just showing you two bounce drive get that little bump You saw that little bump right there to create the space and the little fadeaway to get a clear look knock down baseline J Marcel coming off 16 points in the win over to Paul and what was one of his best shooting performances of the season on Tuesday night and Dickey, you talked about it transferring over from Maryland where he was the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. He came here to have a bigger role offensively. He's provided that for Marquette. He's provided that role offensively, but also defensively. And this is what happens as you see him grab this rebound. When you shop the transfer portal, which I call the college free agency, you can get some quality veteran players to help you maintain Bring in energy and experience. Omax Prosper. Rebound Obiagu. Here comes Bryce Aiken pushing the pace. Drawing contact and a blocking foul goes against Marquette. And Coach Shaka Smart. Coach Shaka Smart is over there pleading for a push off right there. But Aiken is downhill in transition. This is the best time to attack the defense. When they're backpedaling and he's attacking, Mitchell trying to get his hands and tie it up just wasn't enough. And now Mitchell will take a seat with two fouls. That brings back in Cam Jones. Hardy has six points in five minutes to Jones. Richmond spinning and threading it down to Obiagu, but not before a foul was called this time against Kirk Quinn. And Coach Willard brings a Kadari Richmond off the bench. I mean, that is a to have the luxury to bring a talent like him off the bench who can score, has size and strength, and can get to the basket. Had a 
huge game in the overtime win against UConn. Step back three for Aiken and drills it from the top of the key. That was NBA-esque right there by Bryce Aiken. Putting them in the bag with the step back pull up three. Seven straight games and double figures for Aiken. There's a corner three for Morcel, and Morcel is unconscious in this first half. Seven points, and he's perfect from the floor. Again, this Marquette team at the beginning of the season, I don't think they understood how important it was to share the ball, find open guys to get high-quality shots. Well, they found it now, and the results in knockdown open shots like that. Now Morcel coming with a double team. Under 10 to shoot for Aiken. Tipped away by Omax Prosper into the front court and Prosper draws a foul on Trey Jackson A little under eight minutes left in the first half Matt and on the other side Kevin Willard told us coming off that loss to DePaul on Thursday night in which they gave up 96 points he said I don't think I've ever given up 96 points as a head coach We've got to figure it out defensively and a lot of that again has to do with the fact that listen that DePaul game for Seton Hall, the first time they had their full nine-man rotation since the Texas game back in early December. Yeah, I don't want to make excuses for Seton Hall and Coach Willard, but that is a fact. Coming back from the COVID protocol, not being able to practice, trying to get back in the swing of things. Now, again, the other teams in the Big East are not going to feel sorry for you. They're going to take advantage of it. But Coach Willard has to figure out immediately how to recover. Rejection at the rim by Obiagu. Security. Protect my rim. Obiagu going up. Rejection right there. This is what I call when you have to call security at the club. Come get Prosper. Get him out of here. Obiagu using his length, just his timing, having the ability to pursue blocks. I watched him last season versus Georgetown, Matt. He had seven blocks in the first five minutes of the game. One of the best shot blockers, not only in the Big East, but in the country. At seven foot two, 265 pounds. Well, the block shot record in the Big East is 12 by Dikembe Mutombo in 1989 versus St. John's. Good defense by the Pirates right there. That was good team defense. Forcing the shot clock violation. That's a matchup to watch all afternoon. Kirk Queth and Iko Biagu, the top two shot blockers in the conference, both in the low block this afternoon. Roden and Obiagu puts it back out to Gadari Richard Richmond. And Aiken drills another three with a hand in his face. That's his second. One of the slip-ups by the Golden Eagles, Justin Lewis looking, miscommunication, didn't, wasn't aware of Aiken. And a pull-up, smooth jumper in the lane from Lewis. <laughs> Lewis knocks that jumper down. He's still talking about the defensive possession before. I like that. Back and forth we go, Price Aiken. Back-to-back -back triples. And Aiken can do that. You have to be locked in, especially when he just knocked down a shot. Extra pass to Prosper. Aiken now with 11 points. Trying to draw a foul against Kolek and instead gets it back in his hands with 20 on the timer. Aiken with a hop step. And a rejection from Prosper. Three on two. Morcel, that's a three. Daryl Morcel, three of three from downtown. He's got 13. When Coach Shaka Smart talked about the connection you have to have among your players, I love the fact that the Golden Eagles players are connected and they continue to share the ball to get open looks like that one. Ten assists already on 12 made field goals. And Shaka Smart's team has had at least 24 assists in each of the last three games. All three of those, of course, they won. They are one of the hottest teams, not only in the Big East, but perhaps in the country right now. Absolutely. Now watch the Marquette team. Kolek is out of the game, so the dynamics change offensively at the point guard position. More of scores like that one right there. Cam Jones. 
There's a different dynamic when Coley goes out the game. They come in now with Cam Jones, who's more of a scorer, as you can see. Three triples in the game for Jones. He has nine points. Obiagu. Sit out to Jared Roden. Seahawks has to punish Marquette's smaller lineup they have right now in the paint. Settling, settling for jump shots is not the route to get the momentum going in your favor right now if you're the Pirates. Kevin Willard echoed those same sentiments in our call this week, saying we've just got to take better shots offensively. And Jared Roden dumps it home on a run out. Heads up play by Richmond. That's his experience and his vision. Seeing Roden leaking out. Eight point game, four and a half to play in the first half. Omax Prosper. Cleared out by Lewis. Lewis following his own miss and rejected by Obiagu. Lewis back to Iguodaro. Marquette staying with it. Yeah, and it wasn't a shot clock violation. Because of the block shot, it changed possessions for a second, so they were able to play through it. And Marquette just sticking with it, not giving up, being relentless. Largest lead of the game for Marquette. Will they count the basket? Yes, they will for Kadari Richmond. Kadari Richmond bringing that Brooklyn, New York flavor, the vision to kick it out, lift to the court. Roden playing above the rim. Marquette up by eight. Milwaukee Bucks, he's always been talented. His skill set fits where the NBA is now with the versatility at his size. Love to see. I know Coach Willard wish he could suit him yes. up for this game right now. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. We talk a lot about the depth of the Seton Hall team and the veteran players on it, but they still did not return two starters from last year. Shavar Reynolds, their point guard, and then, of course, Sandro, who not only was co-player of the year, but led this team in scoring and rebounding. Yeah, and I think Jerry Roden has stepped his game up and took it to another level being the main scorer for this Pirates team. To fill that void, Sandro left. You know, again, we talked about the COVID issue has kind of slowed them down right now. They are very, very veteran. 10th oldest team in Division One. Average age is 21 years old. There's some NBA teams. No, I, was, yeah. I was about to say, they're older, than, they're older than some NBA teams. Bryce Aiken is 25 years old. Man, he's a veteran. He would be a veteran in the NBA, man. <laughs> he would be a long-time veteran in the NBA at 25 years old. By the way, that last foul on Seton Hall went against Tyree Samuel, so now he takes a seat with three fouls. 3.20 left in the first half. Marquette with an eight-point lead, and it's really Dickey been right around that six- to nine-point lead for Marquette for most of this first half. Richmond creating space and a tough take to the rack by the Syracuse transfer. Right there, Richmond worked hard to get that basket, but he just took it upon himself. That was a grown man move right there. Just went over there, said, excuse me, excuse me, pardon me. Get out of my way. Let me get this bucket. Iguodaro right back to Morcell. Who at one point in this first half had seven straight points for Marquette. Five to shoot for Jones. David Choplin coming off the bench and getting involved in the three-point scoring. Marquette has made nine in the first half. Joplin, another freshman who's taking advantage of the accelerated development, getting his experience on court, stepping up, knocking down threes. Joplin, of course, one of the original Texas commits. Deshaka Smart coming over to Marquette. Offensive board. 
It's a second opportunity to Seton Hall. If you're the pads, don't work so hard to try to manufacture shots. Keep this game simple. Give it to your big fella. You have the size advantage right now in the paint. All the dribbling is not effective. And that missed everything off the hands of Yetna. Now up ahead to Marcel. He's rejected. But draws a foul and two shots coming for the Maryland transfer. And that's just instinct right there. That's just a high level of feel in this game. Kolek getting the ball, not even putting the not even putting the ball on the floor. He just makes a nice full length pass to Morcell, who's fouled by Yetna. Easy call right there. But just the, just the awareness to kick it up court and not waste dribbles. How about Daryl Morcell now with 14 points? He's averaging 13 a game. What a first half by the former Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah, he's probably saying, let's have some morning, more morning games. <laughs> <laughs> more morning games. I'm feeling it right now. Has become one of the vocal leaders of this team. In a year where he's been asked to do more on the floor than ever before in his career, not only be the lockdown defender, but also take on more responsibility on this end of the floor. Well, Coach Shaka Smart understood coming in, taking this Marquette job for his first year, knowing that he had a majority young team. Let me go get a veteran who has some presence on the court as a leader, and Morcell is that guy. The tip of the spear of this Marquette defense that has been very disruptive in the first half. Forcing a Seton Hall team that only averages 10 turnovers a game to 10 in the first half. Aiken dribbling through the defense. Are you kidding me? Aiken, how'd he get that to go down? Well, when you're a talented offensive player, you can manufacture. You see him just knifing through the defense, using the ball handling skills, and using the quickness to pop up in the mid range in the paint. Very talented score right there. What I love about Bryce Aiken. He's a big fan of art. He considers basketball an art form, Dickey, allowing him to express himself. He likes to get creative with the ball in his hands. Well, he definitely expressed his artwork right there. Crossover, crossover, pull up Jay with a three-point play. Wiggle you out of your shoes. <laughs> Straight wiggle. Lewis, short on the hop step and a good rebound from Yetna. Final 70 seconds in the first half. Aiken with a hand in his face. Bryce Aiken, 17 in the first half. I guess it's needless to say, Bryce Aiken is feeling it right now in this first half. Has four games out of the last seven with 22 points. He's close to getting there in the first frame. Travel on Lewis gives it back to the Seton Hall Pirates. Well, Aiken's on fire. You cannot let him dribble into a shot. He's talented. He can score, catch, and shoot. But most importantly, he's very talented off the bounce. A simple pull-up in transition, 17 points. Perfect from the three-point line. And the only guy for Seton Hall that's made a three in this game, he's 4 of 4. The rest of the team 0 for 7. This is a guy coming off of 22 points last game. They lost. Miles Kale drawing a blocking foul on Greg Elliott. Much to the chagrin of this packed house in Milwaukee this afternoon. Crowd is not, the Marquette crowd is not happy about that call. They felt like Greg Elliott was right in position. He's disappointed also. Look at that baby face. He still looks like a freshman. <laughs> so let's look at it right here. Ah, he looked, he, he, ah, he has a case, Shaka Smart, the fans, Greg Elliott, they have a case. I will represent you in court, Greg Elliott. You were right there in position for that charge now he heads to the bench with two fouls no i don't know i mean matt i'm representing this is my client your honor that <laughs> was not a foul i'm not the judge of this matter <laughs> the judges are wearing the stripes okay 8-0 run for seton hall has gotten them back to within three they trailed by double figures at one point in this first half colin rejected by obiagu that's his fourth block Shot clock turned off. What do you want from Seton Hall? They could potentially tie the game here. Well, you're going to go ISO with Aiken right now. He's the hot man. He has posture on him. Everybody drop down. Get ready. 
No need for a screen. They're going to switch off. But you got to give it to Aiken and let him go to work. Three to shoot for Aiken. Aiken, kick out. Rodin at the buzzer. And it rims out. But an 8-0 run to close the half for Seton Hall brings them back to within three. It was the Aiken show, and then it was the shot blocking by Obiagu. Defensive interior presence. For the second half, 44-41 Marquette taking on a top 20 Seton Hall team. Matt Schumacher, Dickie Simpkins with you. Bryce Aiken, phenomenal in that first half. Partner, 17 points, perfect from the floor. Yeah, he was amazing with his offensive production. And right there, starting off the second half, you always want to see how a team comes out in that first possession. The power is showing execution, making the game easy, getting it to their go-to guy. Well, now it's a 10-0 run for Seton Hall. They closed the first half on an 8-0 run. Morcell off the back iron and a rebound yet no. And Willard may have proven me wrong when he said they made their run early. And I said, I, you know, Marquette finds runs throughout a game. They haven't since that early part, and the Pirates have changed the momentum. Marquette led by as many as 11. Meanwhile, Seton Hall has not led since it was 8-6. to six. Tipped into the hands of Lewis. Now Morcell. And he's fouled on the drive by, I believe, Miles Kale. Nope, it'll go against Jared Roden. And that is his first. And again, I'm going to keep talking about the passing of the Marquette Golden Eagles right there. Justin Lewis getting that rebound. He looked like he was going to take a dribble. Recognize more cells out in transition. Those are just simple plays where you see the young Marquette team coached by Shaka Smart are continuing to progress and develop and understand what easy plays are, what winning plays are, that simple pass leading to two opportunities at the free throw line. It's a Marquette team that has totally outpaced expectations to this point in the year. Nine new scholarship players, an entirely new coaching staff. They lost their top five scores from a year ago. And yet, Dickie, here they are in the midst of a three-game winning streak and leading a top 25 team in the country. And I would like to contribute that to Shaka Smart setting the culture, setting the tone. Justin Lewis emerging as the main go-to guy for this team. Kolek setting the pace as a point guard, making passes, finding guys. And then ultimately, more sales setting the tone as a veteran college player defensively. It's a Marquette team that is in the midst of a crazy stretch an all-important stretch for a team that right now is projected to be in the ncaa tournament today starts what could be six straight games against top 25 teams they have the right momentum going right now where this is the best time for them to take on those top teams in the country they're playing well their confidence is high they're making shots this is the best time in ever to play that type of ball coming up and it could be the difference at the end of the season in whether they make the NCAA tournament or not. As that shot won't fall for Lewis. Now here comes Bryce Aiken leading all scorers with 17. Rodin had it deflected by Kolick. Kolick is unassuming as a defensive player, but he finds a way just because of his field and his BBIQ on how to stay in front of the offensive player and use his quick hands to come up the field. Marcel draws a foul on Yetna. Oh, no, it'll go against Obiagu. That's his first. There's a look at the gauntlet coming up for Marquette. They'll play Villanova twice. They play the Seton Hall team twice. Xavier and Providence, a team that they beat handily in their largest victory in program history over a top 25 team. In those upcoming games, this Marquette team, this young team will get to learn a lot about themselves playing against those top teams. Good feed from Aiken. Played even better defensively by Lewis, who forces another turnover. 12 turnovers in the ball game for Seton Hall, a team that has protected the Rocks so well this year, the second fewest turnovers per game in the Big East with just 10. 
Kolick heads to the bench. And the most seasoned man on this Marquette roster, Greg Elliott, comes back into the game, playing in his 100th career game in a Marquette uniform today. Good Marquette right now. You want to be a good home, a good body. You want to find your mismatches. Prosper up against Obiagu. Picked into the hands of Aiken and fouled promptly by Kirk Weff. Excellent defense by Seton Hall. And that all comes from Obiago. You have cutting their fast break, and I'm cool with that. But a flagrant one, I don't think that's necessary in that particular in that particular situation right there. A rare miss for Bryce Aiken, who's top five in the conference in free throw shooting. 84% free throw shooter this year. But now we are tied. And Marquette has made a conscious decision to put Daryl Morsell on Bryce Aiken to kind of slow him down. So he has that responsibility. 18 points for Aiken on the lob, deflected by Kirk Quinn. Now Prosper. Everybody in the crowd wanted that. Up ahead to Aiken, who finishes. No, he does not. It rolls off the front. And it looks like Obiagu might have been touched up on the other end of the floor. Well, I think we have a hoopers reel right here. We have Prosper being aggressive, exploding, but missing an easy dunk. And Obiago just running into his back. And then Bryce Aiken missing an open layup. But right here you have Obiago pursuing a block shot. And runs into the back. I think Obiago is fine, just shaking up a little bit with that contact. First time we have been tied since it was six to six. And a foul goes the other way. And if that's against Quaff, that'll be his third. You see the Golden Eagles, they are they are applying pressure full court immediately while the ball is stopped. That was offensive goal to me, it seems to be. But Marquette right now, they're in the game with their better defensive unit. So the goaltending goes against Obiagu. No foul on Quef. Now here's Marquette's more versatile lineup defensively, a smaller unit that they can move around, they can switch on defense. Kadari Richmond into the ball game for Seton Hall. Roden left open. Marquette just one for its last seven from the floor. Started off the ball game red hot, shooting over 60% early in that first half. Elliott, tough shot, won't go. Now into the hands of Aiken. And he coughs it up and out of bounds. 14th turnover of the ball game. That's double what Marquette has. With your coach Willard, and your coach Shaka Smart. <laughs> You're waiting for that TV timeout. You want to call a timeout now. You're trying to make it to that TV timeout because the basketball right now, as we had an exciting first half, it's a little stagnant right here. What do you attribute that to? Well, I think guys are trying to do too much too fast right now in the second half after seeing success. And this is when your point guards and your leader of your team needs to regroup the guys on the court. Step back. Let's get focused. Kanari Richmond blocked at the rim by Oso Iguodaro. Security, protect my house. Elliott the pull up. And tip back out to Richmond. Five blocks in the game for Seton Hall. And two now for Marquette, and a whistle goes against the Pirates. That's their 15th turnover. Figadaro just come. In terms of numbers, the team just to combine two for 14 to start the second half. Yeah, I attribute that to the defensive effort of both teams. Obiago shot blocking that helps your defensive field goal percentage. And then with some of the shot selection, 
where both teams are getting away from how they created easy shots for their teammates, and now they're going one-on-one, -on -one, forcing shots. That's what is making the field goal percentage be different from the first half to the second half. 16th turnover for Seton Hall. What's been the catalyst for all these cough-ups? Well, when you catch the ball, don't always think you have to do something offensively and put it on the floor. Catch it, survey, evaluate, make a quick pass, move off the ball. If you do that, it'll come back to you. Yetna just thinking he could take it right away. That is going to turn into a, a bad play. Meanwhile, Forsell smartly going right into the teeth of the defense and drawing a foul. That's the second on Obiagu. And now the veteran Morsell back to the free throw line. Saw the open paint, attack the big. When you're attacking the shot blocker, you're going to have to go chest to test. He used his body to make the contact to avoid the block and drew the foul. Morcel so good at getting to the line. This is his third trip of the day. And his first points of the second half. Both coming from the charity strike where he is perfect. Six of six. He now has 19 points. Marquette on top by four. Led by as many as 11 in the first half. Yet the with the hand in his face. Tough shot goes down from distance. He has the capability to knock down threes. He's a stretch big. Only shooting 23% from the three. I wouldn't get caught into it, but he can knock down shots as you saw there. Now a three on one for Seton Hall. Miles Kale lost it and took too many steps. And that has been the story of the afternoon for Seton Hall, just when it looks like they might get out and get some momentum, a costly turnover. Yeah, right there, when you lose handle on the ball, you just gather yourself and pick it up. Don't try to dribble anymore. Just pick it up real quick, get off of it, so you can get back in the groove of things. Seven turnovers this half. We're not even seven minutes into the half as Obiagu gets the rejection. Right there. <laughs> Marcel didn't use the body. Obiagu would just keep going to block that easily. And Rodin puts it down, and that's the first lead for Seton Hall since they led 8-6, to six, six minutes into the first half. You have a Jerry Rodin on your team, and you go on a spurt where you can't score. He can get you a bucket. Certainly helps to have Obiagu back there. Already has five blocks in the game. And Yetna corrals the board. Could not corral. Here comes Daryl Morsell. It's remarkable, really. 18 turnovers for Seton Hall, yet they're winning the ball game 51 50. Kolek dribbling around Obiagu. There's the sixth rejection for the big man. Not going to happen. Obiagu's too good of a shot blocker. He now has five or more blocks in three straight games. Seton Hall an opportunity to extend the lead. Kale drawing a foul at the rim. He went down heavily on the floor. Helped up and he'll get two shots. And that's one of the rare mental breakdowns by Kolek that I've seen in his play of lately. He's normally making good decisions. Two bad decisions right there trying to challenge Obiago. Obiago's his athleticism, his size, Kolek, not an athletic guy. You're going in there versus two bigs, and they just smother him and create a turnover. Yetna at 6'8", 225, and Obiagu, 7'2", 265. And Kolek, 6'3", 193, and not that athletic. You saw how that turned out. So Kale at the free throw line. And it's a three-point lead for Seton Hall and a 7-0 run for the Pirates. Remember, they left the first half on an 8-0 run, now on the midst of a 7-0 run. And here's where you can see that veteran team, that veteran presence in college. Guys who have been in college for a while. Oh. 
Aiken certainly one of those. Second year grad transfer from Harvard. Playing in his sixth season of college basketball, 25 years of age. He has looked the part, 18 points, six of eight. And he's picked up a couple of steals on the other end as well. Richmond gives it up. Extra pass to Yetna in the corner. Obiagu fighting for it. And a fresh 20 now for Aiken. Get an extra possession. Just be calm, cool, and collective. Not force anything. Obiagu, the offensive board. And he draws the foul on Cam Jones. Eighth offensive rebounding. The shots that he has altered when guys have driven in there. I love that you made that point, Dickie, because Marquette in the first half shot almost 54%. In the second half, they're one for 14 from the floor. And they understand in the first half, Marquette, a lot of Marquette shots they made, they were nine for 14 from the three, so they were knocking down perimeter jump shots. Obviously, Obiago was in the paint. They were knocking down jump shots, but when they got in there, you felt his presence because <laughs> he was sending it out first-class mail. Tied a season high six blocks. You mentioned the three-point shooting. That was huge for Marquette as they built that 11-point lead in the first half. They made nine threes, which ties a season high for a half. And yet, in the second half, they're 0 for 3 from distance. <laughs> Here's Lewis curling off the screen, trying to go over Obiago, could not. Kept it alive for Queth, who ends a 9-0 run for Seton Hall. Did I just see a player get a rebound on his back and make an assist on his back? Indeed you did. Justin Lewis attacking, falling on the ground, was able to rebound the ball and have the awareness to make an assist to Queth. Nice play by the young fella. Find the shoot for Roden. Gives it up into the corner. Richmond had it coughed up. Richmond following his miss. Out to Roden for three. And a third opportunity for Yetna. No. Obiagu, a fourth chance, rejected by Kirkweth. Kirkweth showing his ability to rim protect. You can block shots, big fella, so can I. And I don't know how many times I've ever seen this in basketball. Justin Lewis grabbing a rebound on his back and having awareness to find the pass for an assist. You got to love it. Locked in. Roden on the pull up. No. Finally rebounded by Elliott to a ring of cheers throughout Pfizer for him. A tough defensive effort that tripped down the floor. And now here comes Bryce Aiken back into the ball game. Aiken coast to coast through contact, scooting it over the top of Kirkwell. Good job to maneuver and transition, use the other side of the basket to avoid the block shot. Another 20-point game for Bryce Aiken. He has five now in the last eight games. Banked in by Lewis. The ATM was used in the first half by Marcel. And now Justin Lewis just went to that same ATM machine on a Saturday. The bank is open. Doesn't have to be pretty as long as it goes down, especially the way Marquette has struggled to shoot in the second half. Yetna, a second chance, got it to go. And now the offensive rebounds starting to mount for Seton Hall. They have 14. Well, while you have this young team on the court, Marquette, you know, Coach Shaka Smart has to find a way to press upon them to continue to get high-quality shots. He understands he has to live with some of the shot taken where they're, you know, testing the waters, kind of hitting a heat check. But getting quality shots is key. That's what they were getting in the first half. Eight to shoot. Richmond backing down. Altered by Queth and a block from Kirk Queth. Hey, I knew coming into this game, Matt, I don't know if you got your e-bite or not, but I knew it was going to be a block party with both teams having shot blockers that send it out of there, and they have not disappointed me. The party is live. And a foul goes against Seton Hall. It'll stay with Marquette. 
Golden Eagles with four team blocks. Seton Hall with eight. Obiagu has seven of the eight blocks for Seton Hall. Both teams average five blocks a game. Led by their shot blockers, their interior defenders, Obiago for the Pirates, Queth for the Golden Eagles. And they are making sure that they're sending these shots out of there. You can't come in there weak. Obiago following up what was his most complete performance against DePaul since the COVID pause with another huge game today as Lewis attacks the rim with a one-hand jam. O-M-G. That's the talent of Justin Lewis, using the shot fake to raise Obiago and just driving straight to the basket to play above the rim. Ronan driving. Altered by Kirkweb, numbers the other way for Marquette. That dunk got this crowd up on their feet and excited. Lewis right back to the rim. No, quack the offensive board. The first timer for Daryl Morsell and Marquette. Morsell, that's a three. Daryl Morsell with 22. Coach Shaka Smart talked to us, Matt, earlier before the game, and he said, shooting threes this team has worked on it he's allowing them to get their attempts and they're getting rewarded with the work they put in more sell knocking down with confidence tied again at 59 Aiken rolling to the cup no and there is Kirkweth again five oh run for the Golden Eagles and a foul in the corner. Greg Elliott drew it, and it is a three-point foul. Let's get this and get the crowd ignited with that dunk. Shot fake, and this is what I call hashtag special delivery. Justin Lewis, tie game. Get ready. It's time for the savings event of the year. The Home and Auto Bundle Extrava Festa save -thon. And this Home and Auto Bundle Extrava Festa save -thon, there's no telling what we might bundle. Home and Auto Bundle Extrava Festa save -thon. Bundle cars, trucks, colonials, bungalows, and that weird hut you're on. The outcome could go in their favor. As long as they continue to play like they've played in the last three possessions and hold off the Pirates defensively, this game, they could come out on the winning side. But again, you know, if you're the Pirates... And you have this veteran group, as you see Greg Elliott coming off that 25-point game from their high. If you're Seton Hall, man, you want to regroup right now. You have senior, you have veteran players right here. You want to make good decisions coming down here in this next possession. I believe this is a big possession right here, man. 8-0 run right now for Marquette. Greg Elliott makes two of three free throws. A point of emphasis for Shaka Smart in that last under-8 huddle. Two-point lead for the Golden Eagles. Miles Kale on the drive, and he draws a foul and gets to the free throw line. I like the execution right there by Coach Willard. The play he drew up coming out of the timeout. They went right to Miles Kale and isolated him versus Kolick. Getting him in the elbow area, letting him use his footwork and attack, and that resorted in a drawing the foul. Marquette in the bonus the rest of the way. Seton Hall getting very close. And we told you in the first half, Seton Hall has lived at the free throw line this season. They've taken the third most free throw attempts in the Big East so far. And they're one of the best shooting teams right. from the charity stripe this year. All right, it's one thing to get to the free throw line, but it's another thing to be a high quality high percentage free throw shooting team seton hall shooting 83 percent in big east play at 78 percent overall tyler kolek just headed to the bench with three fouls and a bloody nose seton hall switched up their defense now they're in the two three zone they're going to force marquette to shoot for the jays lewis at the short tapped around and into the hands of miles kale
Seton Hall on the wrong end of a 7-1 run right now. Started the half on a 10-0 run and took the lead momentarily. Here is Jared Roden. I like what Jared Roden just did there. He called for an isolation on Greg Elliott. Yetna fighting for the offensive board. Still loose, and Yetna with the soft touch around the rim. If I would say there was one glaring weakness of Marquette, and that is rebounding. That is where they're going to have to touch up in that area. A game rebounding effort by the whole team. They've been out-rebounded today, 39-23. And yet they trail by just one. Obiagu the rebound. It's like a heavyweight fight down there in the paint with Obiago and Quest. Seven blocks, ten rebounds for Obiago as Price Sakin drills another triple. He has 23, and he's perfect from downtown, five of five. So they're resilient. Right here is another phase of learning your team. Five minutes left. This is the crucial, the critical of the game. How do you pull out this win? How do you get the momentum back your way and get this win leading into those games against those ranked teams? Kolek on the drive and wisely uses the left hand on the reverse. And that's the first bucket on the floor for Marquette in the last two minutes. And an offensive foul by Jared Roden gives it back to the Golden Eagles. Well, right there, Jared Roden is trying to establish a mismatch with Greg Elliott guarding him. But he's starting to post up too early. Bryce Aiken hasn't even got the ball past half court. He cannot feed the post. Be patient. Wait your time. He's posting up now. Aiken's not ready to deliver the ball. He's wrapping his arms around Greg Elliott. And Greg Elliott doing an excellent job with his hands up, moving his feet. Big foul on Roden, too. That's his fourth. He heads to the bench with 12 points. The team's leading scorer. Well, he wouldn't get that foul, like I said. Post up too early. Aiken wasn't ready to deliver the ball. Aiken has 23. He's been a one-man highlight reel tonight for the Pirates. As that step back misses short. Now Kolek up ahead to Morsell. Hammers it home. And we're tied again at 65. You haven't seen a lot of Kolek in this game, but when you have, it's been important plays. The quickness and awareness to get the ball up court for easy buckets. And then that last play where he navigated with deception and score. Richmond short. Obiangu on the miss. Back out to Aiken. Miles Kale defended by Kolek. Kale into a wall of defenders. And Obiagu a third opportunity. Aiken left open. Yetna again. Rejected by Quest. Oh man, Lewis wasn't even looking right there. And luckily he looked up at the last second. So that wouldn't be a turnover. Good defense by Morsell. And now Morsell taking it right off the window on the baseline drive. And Marquette has the lead again. Count on your veteran player, Morsell, to step up. The block on the defensive end. And the finishing transition. For Seton Hall playing with four fouls. So you, you, you're looking at time score and management. Both teams with two timeouts left. We're at the three-minute mark. Every possession is so critical. Tough shot from Bryce Aiken, and he continues a hot afternoon with 25 points on 8 of 13. You have a talented offensive player like Aiken. Sometimes he can make a coach look so good, no matter what you drew up. Get him an open look, and he knocks it down. So a season high for Daryl Morsell and a season high for Bryce Aiken. That's deflected by... Jared Roden playing with four fouls. Right here, you want to figure out how to keep it in Bryce Aiken's hand. Ball screen actions, and if it's not in his hand, then you go to Jared Roden. Roden fouled by Marcel. Marquette did have one foul to give there. That's just the first on Daryl Morsell. So now one more, and that puts Seton Hall in the bonus the rest of the way. 
And Daryl Morsell, again, assigned the responsibility to slow Aiken down. He's going to have to use his size and his strength and make the offensive opportunities very difficult. Hopefully be able to get it out of his hand. What a matchup. Last year's Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year in Morsell. And Bryce Aiken having a career day. He draws another foul, and he's headed to the free throw line. Now, Bryce Aiken, he knows how to draw fouls. He's experienced out of isolation. Here, getting into to Morsell's body, and if, if you have your hands down, you're going to lose that battle. That's going to be called a foul on you. His second miss of the game at the stripe, and this is a young man who's top five in the conference in free throw percentage. Yeah, these he are, knocks down the second. Yeah, you're right, man. I mean, shooting 85% from the free throw line, you don't expect to see him miss it, especially in this point of the game. Now it's Marquette's turn. They've made three of their last four shots from the floor. Lewis. Tried loose momentarily by Obiagu. Lewis with eight. High off the window. No call on the contact. Lewis still down behind the play. Numbers the other way for Seton Hall. Yetna collects the board and scoops it in. And still down, writhing in pain. Is stretch it out right now. So Omax Prosper checks into the ball game. Marquette trails by three, final 90 seconds. Elliott! And they will check the monitor to check and see if that indeed was a three. His foot was awfully close to the line. A big three. His first of the game ties it at 70. It's the seventh tie of the ball game. Aiken with a career high 26. Gives it up to Jared Roden. Playing with four fouls. Defended by Morsell. Roden in and out and tipped into the hands of Kolick. Very good defense by the Golden Eagles. The team was locked in. That was easy deep. Well, I'm not having won three straight. What do you do here on this possession if well, you're you, Marquette? You want to get a quality shot. If you can get a shot before where you can go for a two for one, you get it. That'll give you another possession coming down the stretch. Lewis back on the floor after hitting the deck hard, and he bounces it in. Marquette takes the lead. Kolek with the penetration, a paint touch. His vision to find Lewis. Nice floater. Aiken with the season high 25 draws another foul and it goes against Daryl Morsell. Bryce Aiken is pleading for a goaltend. That was not a goaltend. Well, that was a clear block right there. Marquette, good execution right there. They were able to get a shot where they're going to get another possession again. Being up by two right now with Aiken having the ability to tie this game at the free throw line. And Greg Elliott trying to pump up the crowd. Bryce Aiken, a top three free throw shooter in the conference, but he has missed two already in this game. And he missed one in his last chance at the free throw line. And calmly knocks down the first. A season high 27 points for Bryce Aiken. And we're tied again at 72. Right now, this is just the uh, Seton Hall has to play solid defense right here without fouling. This is coming down to the stretch. You may have, you may have two second difference to play from the basket with whoever's guarding him, and maybe let him play off the bounce. Otherwise, Marcel is having a hot game. Oh, Seton Hall elected to go two-three zone right here in this last possession. That means they have to be aware of Cam Jones and Greg Elliott because they provide perimeter shooting. Eight seconds left. Marcel with 26, tying a career high. Gives it up to Elliott with two. Tried to draw a foul, and he draws one. Greg Elliott. Afternoon in Milwaukee. Elliott at the free throw line. And he gives Marquette the lead. Thank you. 
So if he makes it here, Dickie, obviously you're taking the time yeah, out of your seat. Yeah, Coach Will is going to take the time out if he makes this here. Even if he misses this, I believe they've been instructed to call a timeout as soon as you catch this ball if he misses this free throw. Either way, a timeout needs to be called because you have to get your team into the timeout and draw up a precise play with the time you have left to get a bucket. Elliott misses the second and immediately a timeout. One tenth of a we won. So a little bit more time taken off the clock. Two tenths down to 1.5. Miles Kale to inbound. And a whistle comes on the near side by James Breeding. And they're going to call it travel against Miles Kale. Well, right here we have a discrepancy. They're saying that Marquette missed the free throw, and they're saying he could not move on the baseline. But Seton Hall called the timeout. Well, the officials are getting together on this. Shaka Smart wants an explanation. You can clearly see here, obviously, Miles Kale thinks that he has the capability of moving up and down the sideline. And where the discrepancy is that because of the missed free throw, he felt like he could not move, but they called the timeout. They did not tell him he couldn't move, so they're letting them inbound the basketball again, and it's off the hands of Samuel, and Marquette pulls off another.